So today, where are we? We are in Plaza de Marquis de Sobramante. That's right. Our old friend Rafael de Sobramante. They named this plaza after him. It's a beautiful plaza. Take a look. Nice, beautiful fountain. Lots of people hanging out. Hanging with their dogs. Very nice. It's a lot cooler today than it has been. It's very windy, so hopefully the wind noise isn't too much and you can hear me. But the reason we're here in Plaza de Sobramante is actually because it is very nearby a historic bridge right over there. The, uh, the Puente, which means bridge, Puente de Sobramante. And he actually uh, commissioned this bridge to be built when he was uh, governor of this area before he was viceroy. Um, and we're gonna go check it out because it is a bridge over a uh, very interesting stream uh, called La Cañada, which actually has a lot of historical significance here in Cordoba. So let's get up and uh, it's really close so we can just walk right over there. Just across the street here, we'll go up through the plaza. Up the steps here. There's a statue of somebody here. I don't know who it is. Uh, statue of a person. See ya? I don't know who this is. There's no, there's no writing on it either, so I, I, I really have no idea. But anyway, if you can see right across here, this wide uh, avenue here that is has a bridge going across it. This is uh, Marcelo T. de Alvear Avenue, and we're at the cross street, 27th of April. And this bridge right here going across, this is the bridge. It's built back in uh, 1796, I think. 1796, sounds about right. And if you look at it, compared to the other bridges around the area that all go over this stream, La Cañada, uh, it looks different. It's built out of stone. You can see like the individual stones um, because it was built like, you know, like I said, back in 1796. A lot of the other bridges are uh, much more recent. And Cordoba actually, one of the nicknames for the city is the City of Bridges because this uh, stream, La Cañada, runs like right through the center of the city and uh, it's got 26 bridges over it. So there's a lot of bridges and those combined with the bridges that go over the river, the uh, Rio, Rio Suquia that we've been talking about, there's a lot of bridges. So they call it the city of bridges. But anyway, we can, we're over here right now, La Cañada, and you can see, here it is. And uh, this part here is actually like, you can see the man-made walls on the side because they channeled this from a stream that actually comes into the city from like out in the southwest of the city. And uh, interestingly, the first day I came into Cordoba, my flight got in like really, really late at night. So instead of going to my Airbnb, uh, I got a hotel room and it was like right here, like literally like a block or two away from here. And uh, I was right along La Cañada here and I didn't know at all what it was. And there was no water flowing through it, it's completely dry. But um, recently it rained a couple of days, not even that much, just a little bit. And now you can see like after the rain, it's a full on flowing stream. And it's important because when this thing, when it rains, like this, um, this thing floods and there have been several floods over the, you know, the years and it's one of the reasons why they had to you know, engineer this channel with these like large retaining walls. And so over the years they've, and I, when I say over the years I mean like going back to like 1600, they've built different uh, structures to try and channel uh, the water from this stream to channel it from out in the southwest of the city and even further out, way outside of the city, many, many kilometers outside of the city, there's this uh, confluence of hills where all the rainwater rolls down. It ends up in this big pond and then that flows into a stream that ends up all the way here. And, you know, way back in the day before they had any of this built, it would just flood. That stream would flood like crazy when the rains came. 
right, so it's kind of loud here, but if we follow La Cañada north, you can see there it is on the left. And over here on the right is the Primero River, the Sucre River. So this is the point where La Cañada flows north and it joins up with the Sucre River. And actually, there's no traffic, so if we shoot across this bridge here, get over to the other side, you can see where it actually meets up. So that's where it flows in, right there. And you can see all along here, the retaining walls are really, actually really high. So even though it's pretty low now, because it's been raining, but only a little bit, the, you know, the flow from, uh, the, from La Cañada can actually be really, really high. And you can see how high those retaining walls over there are to try and contain the flow. So you can imagine after it rains like a lot, real heavy downpour for a few days in a row, especially like further out where I said where those, uh, you know, the confluence of hills all pour the water down into a pond that all ends up in La Cañada. All of that, all of that from, you know, many, many kilometers away is going to flow in here and it's going to end up right there. So this is, uh, this is how it happens. This is how the river floods when the rains are really, really heavy because they've channeled all of this, uh, this water from La Cañada all the way out from the southwest of the city all the way up to here to this point right here where it connects you can see it rained uh, last night a lot and you can already see the river is like starting to overflow so uh you know like i mentioned in a previous video this river and the cycles of how it floods is like really really important actually to uh to cordoba and to the history of cordoba so you can see how when the river floods it floods pretty, pretty quickly. I mean, it didn't even rain that much last night, and you can see that it's already flooded over, over like onto the bike path over there, and it's already starting to creep up the side of the retaining wall. If you look on the retaining wall, you can actually see the water marks uh, where the high water mark is. So there's still a lot of uh, flooding for, you know, like uh, still a lot of room for it to flood more, but you can already see with just a little bit of rain how, um, how quickly this river floods over and it would flood out whole parts of the city and you know wipe people's houses out and people died in the floods it was very bad so they had to make this uh this channel to control the flooding and uh there's also some really uh kind of weird and dark um, uh urban legend one specifically having to do with this stream and we'll talk about that but first uh i want to walk over to um a place that's actually right by the hotel where I stayed and it's like um, the old th there's like ruins of the old um, channel system the old uh, construction that they built to channel the river way back in the 1600s and there's only a little little teeny bit of it left they preserved it as like a historical monument so I want to go check that out so this is the spot we found it this is where the old, old retaining wall that they called uh, the Cale, Cale Quinto. Wait, hold on a second. It's on this sign over here. El Calicanto. El Calicanto. And this is it. And there's like a little message here written on here that was written actually in 1951, but it sort of explains what it is. My Spanish is not great, but basically I think it says like to honor, uh, an honor from the government of the province and the authorities of the town of Cordoba. Uh, that like three centuries ago they built this giant thing <laughs> they started this thing I guess uh, and it was after the the works of the this uh, Calicanto which is this this wall or what this is like part of uh, because of the oh to contain the torrents and floods of La Cañada and I, I think it's like they they kept this here as a, an example of the construction and to like preserve the I don't know <laughs> preserve like this awesome thing and show everybody how cool it was I don't know I, I whatever it says it's pretty cool and interestingly enough, right here in the plaza, this plaza, by the way, is this tiny little strip. You can see, like, there's La Cañada right on the other side of this little ro this road here. 
and like we're literally just surrounded by traffic here. Everybody in their cars is standing at the uh, at the lights here, are probably staring at me like, "What is this idiot doing filming a wall over there?" But anyway, right here in the plaza. Also, here's our guy. You remember this guy? It's uh, it's Carlos Gardel. We saw Carlos Gardel. We saw this guy's grave in the uh, cemetery, La Chacarita Cemetery, where we were looking for the uh, the grave of the family of uh, Juan Domingo Perón. And we met uh, that, uh, that guy uh, Wolfgang, really cool guy from Austria. He was looking for Carlos Gardel's grave and we, we ended up finding Carlos Gardel's grave over there. Check that video out. I'll put a link to that video down in the description and you can check it out. But uh, yeah, this is it. So this thing is like from the 1600s. I mean, this is like way, way back. And basically the history of La Cañada, as far as I can tell, is it's a stream that in the rainy season, which we're actually in right now, which really like peaks next month in January, uh, in the rainy season, like it floods this thing and uh, it would flood over and it would, you know, wipe out people's houses and a bunch of people die. So they'll build like a, a retaining wall to prevent the flooding. And the wall will, you know, pretty much work for maybe a century or so. And then another big flood will happen and they'll have to improve the wall or build a new wall. And eventually what ended up happening was after a number of floods, one of them like in 1623, when then they, then they first built this thing to prevent that. And then another flood like 200 years later in the early 1800s, they built, uh, you know, more retaining walls. And then eventually in the 1900s, in like the 1940s, they got real serious about it because of a flood in 1939 in January. The floods always seem to happen in January, but uh, in 39, there was a flood that, I mean, it was so huge that like the waters actually flooded all the way over to Plaza San Martin, which from where we are here, let's see, hold on, is like five, five blocks up that way and like another six blocks over that way. So it's the old part of the city that we walked through to get from the other side where uh, the, the river Suquia comes through all the way over to here to La Cañada. And La Cañada here like flows into the river Suquia. And so the old part of the city is like surrounded on all sides by either this river here, La Cañada, or the river Suquia. Um, which was really good, I guess, when they, when they um, founded the city because it's easy to defend if it's surrounded by rivers. But uh, it's kind of a problem when the rains come in January and everything floods like crazy. So basically, after that flood in 1939, when it flooded like all the way over to the center of the city, they got serious about it and they built the canal that you see here that we showed before over on the, the bridge on uh, 27th, 27th of April Street. Um, but like I said, there's just a little bit of water coming through it right now when we saw it. Um, and when it starts to rain more and more, uh, it gets really, really high. And you can see like the, uh, you can sort of see, um, <laughs> there's a dog. <laughs> Someone's dog is walking up on the wall. <laughs> That's adorable, chasing pigeons. Anyway, you can see, you can start to see like uh, the, where the water line is. And the bridges at the highest point are like six meters above the, the bottom of the canal. So you know that it like floods seriously and it gets really, really high if they made them, you know, a whole six meters up above, uh, above the bottom of the canal. So this is a really cool spot. Like I said, this is like right, right next to my hotel that I stayed in the first night I was here. It's, it's like a, a block away from here. And this whole area was right here and I didn't even know about it until I started doing a little more research to try and figure out what this canal was. Um, but there's another really interesting story and it sort of centers around uh, an area that's like super close to here. I'm gonna walk over there real quick. And uh, this is like a dark urban legend, uh, but it's the, uh, the legend of uh, La, La Pelada, I believe, La Pelada de La Cañada. Basically what it is, it's a ghost story. Spooky, ooh. So the story is 
that there used to be a ghost, or well, I guess there, the story still is that there still is a ghost. And uh, she, female ghost, uh, she sort of hangs out around here, right around this corner. This is the corner of uh, Belgrano and Montevideo. And this neighborhood, uh, back in the day, like way back in the day, this neighborhood was like a very, a very seedy neighborhood. A seedy neighborhood of, uh, of uh, dens of sin and pimps and criminals and, and women of the night and whatnot. And uh, the story is pretty dark, so prepare yourself. The story is that there was a woman who, uh, right around this area, was... Uh, defiled by a group of men and then they murdered her and they threw her body into La Cañada and now her ghost haunts this area and the stories over the centuries have been that the uh, ghost of La Palada will, uh, will walk along next to you at night if you walk through this neighborhood and she'll scream as she walks next to you and if you turn and look at her she'll disappear. But uh, the story was that when they had lanterns as street lights through here, every time she would walk through a lantern into the light of a lantern, the, uh, the lantern would illuminate her face and her veil would come off and you could see that she was like bald and, and cadaverous underneath the veil. And that's why they call her La Palada because Palada means uh, peeled so it looked like it looked like her you know her, her hair had been peeled off basically so uh, that's the story of La Palada it's, a, it's a, actually a really uh, pretty well-known urban legend so much so that I think there is a there's a song uh, some artist back in the 80s she like made a song uh, that's a pretty popular song about it and uh, I can't remember the artist or the name of the song, but I'll put it, I'll put it in a, you know, classic sub pause for subtitling right here. And uh, so that's the urban legend. The urban legend is that if you walk through here late at night alone, that she will, uh, you know, she's all like cloaked in dark cloaks with a veil and she'll walk alongside you and she'll scream and, and howl and, and, and you'll, uh, you'll be really, really scared. So anyway, that's the, that's the story of La Cañada. But um, I don't know, I think this is a really interesting part of the city. It like makes this really cool, um, I don't know, it makes this whole neighborhood seem really cool with this canal that runs like straight through it. And uh, also, they, uh, these trees that are along here, they planted these when they made the canal in 1948, when they made this section of the canal. You can see them here all along, like the, the side of the canal. And they kind of like lean. You can see this one's like leaning sideways. These, are, these trees are called tipas, tipas trees. And uh, they lean like this because when they planted them, they're from like a different part of the, like a different region of the country, I guess. They're not like technically supposed to be able to grow here. And so when they planted them, uh, they like, there are the, all these buildings, you know, high buildings around here when they planted them in 1948. And so like as they grew, they leaned in certain directions to try and catch the light um, that, that shined in through the buildings. So that's another interesting thing. And these trees are all, all over here, all through this whole area. Anyway, we're going to keep walking down this way. We're going away from La Cañada. Um, and we're going to head over to a spot that uh, is actually going to be, not in this video, but uh, in the next video. It's really nearby here. It's called the, the Man, uh, what is it? Man, Manzanita Jesuis, Jesuitica, the Jesuit block. I, I'm sorry, I, my Spanish is failing me. It's basically the Jesuit block. It's a very, very old block of buildings. It's been preserved um, by the, the University of Cordoba as like um, a library and a museum. 
and it's right over here, right on the other side, basically, of this uh, big shopping mall across the intersection there. And uh, that's going to be in the next video. And uh, I'm probably actually going to film it right now, and then we'll put it in a future video. So as far as La Cañada, that's the story. And uh, I think it's a really interesting thing how this, uh, this thing that's so iconic to the city you know, there have been paintings and, and stories written about it and all that. There's a whole urban legend about a ghost and all that. And it all just came because, uh, you know, the way the rivers work, right? And the way it rains in January in, 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 uh, in the rainy season here. It rains, it floods, they have to build walls, they have to build canals, they have to channel rivers so that whole neighborhoods don't get washed away. And because of that, you get this like iconic um, landmark in the middle of the city. I think that's really cool. So uh, that'll be it for this video. And uh, like I said, next video, we're gonna go see the Jesuit block. It's gonna be really cool. There's a whole museum over there. Um, and I think we'll check that out too. So we'll see you then.